Back with you. Sorry, a few technical issues with the old audio there. As usual, as we've done a million times in the past, we forget to set it up properly to start, even though we've been here for an hour. So uh, probably everyone out there probably enjoyed the peace and quiet, didn't hear, listen to our voices, but all good. We're getting set for the tip. Really interesting uh, side note for this one, Akilah Bethel uh, lining up for the Port City Power Breakers. Former Brisbane Capitals, so uh, she's played and had a couple of seasons here in Brisbane, so should be uh, an interesting matchup and a nice return for her. Tip is up. We're going to re-jump it. We got our referees this afternoon. We have Talia Hanks and also Jake Porter are the referees for us, and we are now underway. There's Donders skipping it for Howard, looking inside past Stolen, and that's been the story of the season for the Brisbane Capitals. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. Had 23 in the loss to the North Gold Coast last night. And uh, first one already underway on their first possession. Yeah, it's something we've talked about quite a bit in the season so far, Johnny. It's just protecting the ball and actually getting the benefit of the offense. And it's something that a lot of teams, and it's not just the story for the Capitals, it's for quite a few teams in the league. Um, you know, games are just riddled with turnovers. And there just needs to be a little bit better protection of the ball. Bethel gets the first points of the afternoon. Nice baseline jump shot to Gladstone up 2-0. Both teams playing a bit of zone. You got to think uh, the games and the early start probably have a bit to do with that. You want to kind of conserve a bit of energy if possible. Nearly turned over there from Gladstone. They maintain possession. Head coach Ray Cooper going to do double duties today for Gladstone with men's head coach Brady Walmsley away on uh, Basketball Queensland, the north I think it's the under-16s he's with uh, camp. So Ray Cooper going to double duty this afternoon. You on the road? Why not? Why not? <laughs> Gladstone has five on the shot clock. Long jump shot for Coleman is no good. Goes out of bounds. Going to favor Brisbane. You mentioned Donders with the 15 last night. I, I've said it. Donders is, is so talented offensively, but she's quite conservative. I think she needs to be more aggressive as we see Dowdell getting aggressive and laying the first points of the afternoon in for Brisbane. Yeah, really great start there for Dowdell and just a great move down the right-hand side of the court. But you're exactly right. Like, Donders is just a great leader out on the floor as well. And, you know, she had a really good clip last night with the 15 points, but, you know, she could definitely be doing a lot more out there as well. Coleman gets a great bucket to fall plus the foul. Good look inside from Bethel to Coleman, and they've been a really nice combination so far this season for Gladstone. Combining for the bucket plus the foul on that one. Too strong on the free throw. Brisbane looking to run. Donders has it. Going to reset the troops. Willie... Excuse me, Maddie Woodford driving the baseline, dumps it inside for Dowdell. Hook shot, Banks home. For all the score. Brisbane now in a man to man here. Started out in the zone, now switching it out to man. Donders gets a hand on it. There's four on the shot clock with Coleman inside for Bethel. Turnaround jump shots up and strong. Good defense there from Brisbane, forcing a bit of action. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very big defensive game as a whole um, today, John. Like you said, both teams coming off games, you know, going into relatively late last night um, and then an early start today. So it is going to be a big game of defense and how well you can actually stop the offenses from happening. And, you know, so far Brisbane doing a pretty good job on that, on that department. Shout out to Rockhampton Cyclones head coach Chris Muggeridge tuning in live. Chris, I thought you probably would have appreciated the no sound. I'm sure you're probably sick of hearing my voice as Donders drains the jump shot to give the Caps a two-point lead. If you are tuning in live on uh, the Basketball Queensland YouTube channel or Facebook, wherever you are, let us know in the comments. We'll make sure we give you a shout out. Tell us where you're watching from. Who are you backing and picking in this one? A nice turnaround jump shot there for Kelman Poto. She had a great game in that win versus the Rip as well with 25 points and 12 rebounds, five of them offensive. So good matchup inside. 
Dowdell missed the long two. Here comes Bethel. Nice kick ahead for Beetson, but a good recovery there from Dowdell. A tip it out of bounds. Yeah, Dowdell's really had a great game so far. I mean, we're only three minutes in. She's already got four points on the board and, you know, just doing a really great job defensively as well and getting her body um, into the keyway and just preventing uh, Gladstone's offense from really happening. Long jump shot is good for Bethel. First three-pointer of the evening. Afternoon, I should say, gives Gladson that three-point lead. Bethel, really versatile player. She comes up with the tip and forces the steal. Gladson's got numbers. Good kick ahead. Coleman layup is good. Really nice touch pass there. And Coach Bronwyn Marshall going to take a timeout. Things kind of got a little out of control there for Brisbane. Good timeout taken. We'll take one as well. 6.17 to go in the first quarter. It's a five-point lead for Gladstone over the Capitals in your QBL Game of the Week. Welcome back to NAB Stadium in Auchinflower. Just wanted to ask everyone out there, as you may or may not have heard, our friend Narelle Kelly, she's in for the fight of her life. She's been diagnosed with stage two invasive breast cancer in early June. Uh, we're really asking everybody to help. Narelle has worked in the basketball community for the past 20 years and has really sacrificed a lot of her own time and talent and money for the benefit of others, including all of us in the basketball community. So we please ask, to, for you to give back to this wonderful woman. All donations are, are gratefully accepted and appreciated. The Kelly family thanks you so much for your support. Go to the GoFundMe website and search for Get Norell Well. And please, all contributions are welcome and, and will help Norell. Another turnover out of the timeout for the Capitals. Those are killers, Regan. Those really are killers for a team on the, on the floor when you Call a timeout and turn the ball over yet again. And then Coleman drains the jump shot, pushing the lead out to seven. Yeah, definitely so, especially when it's the fourth turnover um, already for the Capitals. And uh, Gladstone's put six points on the board from turnovers as well. So that really does make a big difference when you're only, you know, less than five minutes into the first quarter. Nearly another turnover. Coleman got her hands on it. Woodford has it. Baseline jump shot too strong. Dowdell offensive rebound. Put back is good. It's been one of the best offensive possessions for Brisbane, that Dowdell offensive rebound and putback. Yeah. Bethel has it on the wing. Now out to Bailey inside. Kelman Poto trying to force one up. She's blocked. Shot is short. Brisbane gets the rebound, down five. Pass inside, shot is missed by Isabel Parker. She's fouled, so she's going to go to the free throw line for two shots. I like that a little better there from Brisbane, trying to get some action on the interior. Gladson's done a pretty good job forcing everything to the perimeter so far for Brisbane. Yeah, definitely so. I mean, um, it's just good to see the offense from Brisbane coming as well, and especially with young Izzy Parker on the floor as well, doing a great job to get herself in the paint um, and getting to the line and intentionally drawing that contact as well, going up to the bucket. So first shot is good for her, and hopefully Brisbane's offense keeps moving in this direction. Parker goes one of two. 13-9 the lead for Port City Power Breakers. Bethel goes away from the beats and screen. Hands off for Coleman. Coleman uses the screen from Beatson. And she's going back down on Donders. Tries to pass inside for Beatson. Good read there from Woodford. Dell Dell picks up the pass. They work it around the perimeter. There's Woodford driving baseline. Up and under. Layup is good from Maddie Woodford. No one finds Beatson, and she lays it in with the left hand. Good look there from Bethel. 
Brisbane got caught sleeping on that one. Dell Dell from the free throw line, jumper is short. Parker fouled inside. Oh, they're gonna call Parker for the holding foul. Good job there boxing out by Ashley Kelman Poto. Couple subs for both teams. Checking in for the Capitals. Carissa Grigg checks in. And also checking into the game for the first time for Gladstone. Got number two, Aaron Gear. Coleman from the corner. Jump. Oh, that's a three pointer. Good hit there from Coleman. She's pretty hot at the first quarter. Yeah, yeah, definitely so. And got the lucky rattle on that one to fall for the three point shot. Takes the lead out to seven. Coleman tips it out of bounds. Going to stay with Brisbane. 14 seconds to go on the shot clock. Woodford inbounding. Gets it out to Fagan. Now Donders. Donders again on the wing. Uses the pump fake. No look pass. Good ball movement from Brisbane. Fagan driving. Flips one up. It's too strong. Parker misses the putback. It's tipped around. Gear and Parker tie it up. Possession arrow favors Gladstone. So good scrappy defense there from Port City Power. Yeah, that's good. That's too good. Um, strong. Uh, rebounding opportunities there from Izzy Parker as well. You know, getting herself into the keyway, knowing where the shot's coming from, and just getting her body into the paint ready for those rebounds. Unfortunately, neither worked out in the favor, but it is good to see her getting in there and contesting those rebounds. And Brisbane aren't settling for jump shots with no one there to contest the O board. So, look, good signs for Brisbane. Bethel misses Coleman keeps it alive with two on the shot clock has to fire and hits another three from Coleman that's a tough bucket there pushing the breakers lead out to 10. good ball movement Woodford driving baseline gets to the rim layup too strong nice rebound there from Kelman Poto Good skip pass. Bethel's open for three. The wing three is up. Off. Greg with the defensive rebound. Yeah, Gladstone offense is starting to look really nice now. Um, they're just working that ball and just really moving it around and finding the open players. And, you know, Brisbane defense a little bit slow to pick up on that offense. And, you know, they're letting some of those open shots go now. But I'm sure it won't stay that way for too long. See, good inside pass there from the Capitals. Yeah, great look from Greg to Parker. Nice high-low action, Parker. Tough catch and finish. She gets the finish, and there's a timeout taken on the floor from Coach Ray Cooper. So we'll take one as well. About a minute 50 left in the first quarter. Gladstone up eight, and your QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media. Welcome back to NAB Stadium in Auchenflower. A few shout outs in uh, the YouTube comments. We got some people watching from Dallas, Texas, and also Tammy Irvine, the mother of Akila Bethel, watching all the way live from Baltimore. Shout out to the East Coast of the United States. Uh, my family may be tuning in from New York, New Jersey as well. Who knows? My brother probably is. Gear fires a three, it's too strong. What time would it be on the east coast of New York right about now? It's got to be quarter past nine. Okay. Saturday not, night, not too late. It's not too bad. It's not what Great I time to be yeah. tuning in live, especially if you have a child playing in the game. 
Bethel has been really good. Coleman as well for Gladstone. Griggs flips one up and gets it to fall over Bethel on that one. And Carissa Griggs had a pretty nice impact in her few minutes so far on the floor for Brisbane. Yeah, definitely so. She's been um she's been really really good. You know, big presence on on the inside for def defense against Gladstone, and you know a couple of nice little looks for her as well. And she's put some points on the board now too. So great start coming off the bench. Only had a couple minutes so far. A few of the youngsters on the floor for Brisbane. Dowdell looking inside for Grigg. Tries to go back door to Fuller. Fuller wasn't expecting it. Turnover there for Brisbane. Gladstone got out to that double digit lead. Brisbane's done a pretty good job to chip it back to six. Coleman skip pass. Three pointer is up and strong. Bethel one handed rebound going right back at the defense. Misses the layup attempt. Kelman Poto puts it up and that one falls. Yeah, really good job crashing the boards there, Gladstone. You know, getting their bodies in the line. They see the three point attempt taken. They crash inside the keyway. They pull the O boards and that's the reward that you get for that offensive rebound. Dowdell spins to the left, short, is short, gets her own rebound, trying to power her way through. There's a foul somewhere along inside there. Looks like that one's going against Akilah Bethel. It's going to be her first personal. Dowdell going to go to the free throw line for a couple shots. Her team down eight. Dowdell missed the first one. Second one on its way. That's good. So Gladstone will have the final shot of the quarter, up seven, 23-16. Coleman swings it, Kelman Poto has it. Back to Coleman, good hands there from Fuller. Coleman has to throw one up, it's an air ball. So nice defensive stop there for the Capitals. Probably not the possession Coach Cooper would have liked to have seen to end the quarter, but Pretty good start to the game for Gladstone. Brisbane started out a little sloppy, tidy things up, and yeah, we got a pretty tight game going into the second quarter. Yeah, definitely so. And we spoke it a little bit on um, on the pregame that unfortunately the audio didn't hear, but Coleman's been having a really great season for Gladstone, and she's already come out absolutely firing in the game here. She's sitting on 12 points already, and you know she's hit two from two of her three-point shots. So she's come out and had a really, really great performance. So it's going to come down to Brisbane's going to need to find an answer to that. You know, 12 points in one quarter of basketball is quite a lot. So if she keeps on that streak she's going to find herself getting a lot of points easy and Gladstone you know will put themselves in a pretty good position so Brisbane will just need to come out defend Coleman a little bit better not lose her on the three-point line and then they'll get themselves back into it we'll see what adjustments are made at the quarter time break we'll take a quick one we'll come back with the second quarter of action here in your QBL game of the week presented to you by nothing but net media Welcome back to NAB Stadium in Auchinflower. Just a reminder, everyone, Narelle Kelly, our really good friend, who has been in the basketball administration and part of Basketball Queensland for over 20 years, has recently been diagnosed with stage 2 invasive breast cancer. Uh, she's really sacrificed a lot of her own time and money for the benefit of others. So now we're asking you to give back to this wonderful woman. Please visit the GoFundMe website and search Get Narelle Well and Make any and all contributions that you can. Everything is appreciated to help Norell for the biggest and in the biggest fight of her life. Getting back to the action on the court here at Nab Stadium in Alkenflower, seven point lead for Gladstone. And as you said, Regan, really good first quarter of action led by Coleman. She had 12 points, two assists, also a rebound. Next leading scorer for Gladstone was Bethel with five points, leading the way for. Brisbane was Genevia Dowdell, seven points and four rebounds. Brisbane shot the ball pretty well, 50% from the field, so did Gladstone. Difference in the game, the three-point shooting, three threes, 
from eight attempts for Gladstone. Brisbane yet to hit one. Good pick and roll. Nice block there from Coleman. That's a huge swat of Dowdell. Really nice help defense there from Coleman. Now Bethel has it on the wing. Swings it to gear. Here's a 1 2 2 zone from Brisbane. Trying to stifle a bit of the Gladstone three point shooting. Gear has it on the baseline. Floater is no good. So the zone look. Causes a bit of trouble for Gladstone to start the second. Yeah, and, and I've said it a couple of times now, like Brisbane's defense as a whole has been relatively good in the first quarter of action so far. And, you know, they are making it hard for Gladstone to get points on the board. And a lot of their shots have come from the three-point line. They've got nine points um, from deep. So, you know, and again, perfect example. Great defense there by Georgia Fagan on the inside. Just putting her body on the line, staying up straight on good D. And another really good thing going in Brisbane's favor as well is their ability to rebound the ball. Looking at the comparison, um, Brisbane's pulled 12 rebounds in the game so far to Gladstone's 10. So a really great job from Brisbane defensively. Bethel, another defensive rebound. Gladstone looking to push the pace a little bit here. Bethel's going to reset. Now Beatson has it. She'll fire from the elbow. Short, Donders rebound. Zone here from Gladstone as well. Dell skips it. Good ball movement. Donders puts it on the floor. Step back jumpers up. And good. And that's the kind of stuff that when Donders does that, you think this is a this is somebody who could really take over games. You just don't see it consistently enough for Brisbane. No, definitely not. And you know, that's only the second shot for Donders and second make as well. So, you know, she's already had a really great start to the game on both ends of the floor. So Look, at the moment, you know, Dow Dell has been one of the key players, obviously, for Brisbane, but I'd like to see Donders uh, fire a little bit more as well because she's come out with some great energy in the second quarter so far. How about that crossover from Akila Bethel doing work on the Capitals' defense there? Donders' wing three is up, and that's good. First three-pointer of the afternoon for Brisbane. She's trying to fire a team up there, down four. Beats in double team. Nice pass to Gear, who banks it home. That was a tough pass there from Amanda Beatson. Yeah, that nice was a really, cut. really good finish by Gear as well. Like you said, bit of a bit of a tough pass to get, get your hands on. Gear took it a little bit out of control, but look, did a really great job to finish. Tough finish there for Parker. Now Gladson looking to make Brisbane pay for the miss. Coleman gets inside. She's fouled by Dowdell. She's going to go to the free throw line for a couple of shots. Speaking of uh, gear as well, Renee Gear, mother and sister, watching all the way from up in Darwin. So good to have you guys tuning into the stream as well. Yeah, we love the Northern Territory. Thanks for tuning in. What a finish there from gear. We want to know, did uh, did Aaron, Aaron get the basketball skills from you, Renee, or fr from somewhere else? Also, need to give a shout out to Logan Thunder, women's head coach Brayden Hesselhurst, tuning in on the YouTube stream. Brayden quite often will join us on the commentary as well. We'll look forward to having him back in on the headsets with us one of these days. Yeah, he's had an easy season. He hasn't jumped on yet, so. Oh uh, no, we got him. We got him <laughs> for the Logan men's game a couple weeks oh, ago. The one game I didn't do. Yeah, there we go. I, I, he only did a half though. He tapped out at halftime. Gear jump shot, a little too strong on that one. Dowdell with the rebound. There's a foul inside. Let's see who they give that one to. Looks like it's going to go against uh, Amara Coleman. Wasn't sure if they were going to give it to Kelman Poto or, or Coleman, but they gave it to Coleman on that one. Parker at the elbow. She's been very aggressive in her minutes. They got her for the travel, though. She was ex anticipating the contact there. Didn't get it as early as she thought and took that little extra. It was almost like a half a step, but that half a step is the travel. Yeah, that's all it takes, you know. Just that anticipation of a foul is um, always always dangerous, you know. You, you just got to keep playing the way that you're playing and, you know, 
at this kind of level, you can't expect to take that contact. You've just got to keep playing through and wait for it to happen. It's the same as what he teaches juniors, you know. You always just got to play the whistle. Don't expect there to be a call made or don't expect something to happen. Just play until something physically stops you. Donders goes inside. Parker fouled by Kelman Poto. Her first personal, the second team foul on Gladstone with 5.26 to go in the first half. Port City Power Breakers up by seven. Howard inbounds to Donders. Bit of contact. They're going to get Coleman for the push in the back. Her second personal, third team foul. There's Donders with it, getting inside. No look pass out to Fuller, three pointer, too strong. Bethel and Dowdell tied up. Jump ball called. Possession arrow favors Gladstone. Yeah, good crashing the boards there from Dowdell and Bethel as well. Both just reading the shot, getting their getting their bodies on the line. Yeah, looking at uh, the rebounding numbers, Dowdell has seven already, three of them offensive. Look on the other side for Bethel. Only credited with four rebounds. Feels like she's got more than that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe yeah, my, maybe the stats haven't refreshed just yet. Yeah. Good old good old life stats doesn't always do it straight away. Coleman turned it over. Brisbane has it with five minutes to go in the first half. Fuller steps into a long two. This jump shot's a bit long. And then Stacy Howard. Fouls Kelman Poto on the rebound. Howard's second personal. Team second. Timeout taken on the floor, Regan. We're going to take one as well. We've got about four minutes and 50 seconds to go in the first half. Your QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media. Welcome back to NAB Stadium in Auchenflower. A few more shout outs for everyone tuning in to uh, the game on YouTube. Joan Montanez, uh, let's go Aquila. Another Aquila Bethel fan, very cool. Jose Nieves, loving the ball. Sarah Bond watching from Collinsville up in North Queensland. And we did ask Renee Gear if, uh, if Aaron got the skills from Renee. Renee, don't be so humble. Don't give it to Aaron's brother. He thinks that he gave her the skills, but I'm sure it's got to be from the DNA from you, Renee. Sure of it. Here is Aaron Gear handing off for Beetson with three on the shot clock. Beetson turns it over. Woodford has it one on one with Coleman. She's going to stop and pop. Jump shot's too strong, and there's Bethel with another rebound. Kicks ahead for Aaron Gear. They reset. Bethel will fire a wing three off the front of the rim. Beatson chases it down. Nice cut and a great pass. Bethel finishes with the left hand. That's a great look there from Kelman Poto. And a nice cut from Akila Bethel. Nine points the lead here for the Port City Power Breakers. Woodford goes inside for Greg, gets it back. Hand off for Howard. Baseline jump shot's good. Stacey Howard gets on the board her first two of the afternoon. Her team's down seven. Bethel has it back out to Coleman. Jump shot is up. It's short. Dowdell defensive rebound. She kicks ahead for Woodford. Dowdell's pass. For Howard goes out of bounds. Bit of a miscommunication there. 
Dowdell thought Howard was going one way, one she way. went the other. Howard lifted, leads to a turnover. 3.15-ish left in this first half. Yeah, Brisbane doing a little bit of a better job protecting the ball so far. As we sort of commented earlier, John, they had four turnovers within the first four minutes of the game. They've managed to keep that down to only eight now. So, you know, then the following 10 minutes of play, they've really managed to keep that turnover count down, doing a much better job of protecting the pill. A little bit of contact there, knocking of heads. Kelman Poto caught Stacey Howard right in the face. Howard is down and in a lot of agony. Going to need to get the trainer out here. That could certainly be a concussion there. But she got that. It looked like the back of Kelman Poto's head got her flush right on the nose and in the face. That doesn't look great. Let's hope Stacey Howard's okay. She's a very tough physical player. Mm. But no matter how tough you are, those ones definitely do not tickle. Yeah, no, definitely not. And, you know, it's one of those things that's just – it's always hard in those contact situations as well, especially when it is anything to do with the head or neck. You've just got to take everything so carefully just to you know, make sure that you're protecting the player as best as possible. And how it is a very, very tough cookie. They're just getting her up now and walking her off the court. Well, she's walking off on her own, which is a great sign. Haven't seen any um, blood, so yeah. it doesn't seem like a, like a broken, broken nose, nose or, or anything, anything like that, yeah. It does look like she's got a lot of paint in her nose, though, so it does appear that you know, there was a bit of a knock on her nose. Well, she's uh, being attended to on the baseline. Seems okay. She looked a little pale to me when she got up, but she seems to be in, in pretty good spirits along the baseline. Yeah, having a bit of a laugh and a chuckle, so... High spirited, a little bit of pain, but I think she's going to be all right. Got to give a shout out uh, to our guy up in Townsville, Money Mike St. Maurice. I think he's still celebrating the Toronto Raptors win a couple, couple weeks back. I, I, I know Mike, I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll probably celebrate or any excuse to celebrate <laughs> for however long he can, he'll, he'll take it. Greg inside. Donders turns it over. Bethel comes up with the steal. Kicks ahead for Bailey. Wing three is up. That's short. Tipped around. Bailey gets it back. Flips it up. She misses, but she's fouled there by Shanavia Dowdell. I think we got another knock as Bailey comes up holding her nose as well. A little shaken up. And she goes right to the free throw line to take a few shots. It's going to become a game of protect the nose, really, at the moment. It seems to be the way that it's happening. Got to go the old uh, Rip Hamilton and just get a few face masks out here yeah. to, to protect the face. Or we could do like they do in Canada. You wear a face mask. Maybe we turn it into a ice hockey. <laughs> get the helmet with the, with the face guard. Goalie mask. Bailey's free throws push the lead out to eight for Gladson, approaching two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. First half, I should say. Dowdell double teamed, gets it to Woodford on the baseline, kicks it out for Donders, top of the key. Good jab step, elbow jumpers up, no good. Bethel, another defensive rebound. She's been excellent on the defensive boards to start this half. Yeah, she really has, and look, the Gladstone team as a whole has been doing a really good job of crashing the boards as well. I mean, they've managed to pull down 19 so far, so they've caught up to Brisbane's rebound count. See a really great st steal there from Frances Donders. She finishes through the contact plus the foul. Good fast break opportunity converted there from Brisbane. Really well run by Donders. Kicked it ahead early. That's what you always tell everybody. Kick it early, force the defense to make a, a decision, and then using the pump fake to draw the foul plus the contact. And it's good to see, you know, that it did work out in their favor as well because it is a, a rare turnover from Gladstone in this game so far. I mean, it's only their fourth. So it's good that when they do get that opportunity for Brisbane to get that turnover, that they do end up getting down the other end and actually converting that into points. So good job from Donders with the recognition and a great finish in the end as well. Five-point game now. About a minute 45 to go in the first half. Coleman fouled hard. A lot of contact there. That one went against Maddie Woodford. Woodford contesting the shot. Coleman 
certainly not shying away from the contact on that drive. No, definitely not. And Coleman's done a really good job of that all game as well. You know, just getting herself in a position where she can draw that contact on the way to the bucket. This will be her third attempt at the charity stripe. So just doing a really great job of get, putting her body on the line, driving into that contact and um, just, you know, finishing where she can, but just getting herself to the line because she has been a relatively good free throw shooter throughout the season. Not so much here this morning. Yes, it is still morning. Um, not so great this morning. That's only one from four for her today, but typically a relatively good uh, free throw shooter. Subs on the floor, checking in for Brisbane. Audrey Fuller, Maddie Woodford getting a bit of a breather. Coleman went one of two. Six points, the lead for the Port City Power. Greg hook shot, banks home, that's a good look. And Carissa Greg has been really nice this afternoon for Brisbane. Brisbane only down four, nice give and go. Short though from Bethel and then she fouls. Abigail Marsh. Yeah, that it was goes a great to... look, just unfortunately too strong on the attempt there from Bethel. Yeah, and Marsh is gonna get a walk all the way down the other end of the floor now for a couple of free throws. 15 Gladstone. foul on Gladstone. Mm. First free throw from Marsh is good. And Brisbane doing a much better job here in the second quarter defensively, limiting Gladstone's second chance opportunities. Marsh goes one of two. Coleman with a head of steam, kicks ahead for Bethel. Driving baseline, a lot of contact. They get her for the offensive foul. Very surprised on that one there, Regan. I thought there was a lot more contact I thought the defender really jumped into Bethel on that one. Yeah, I didn't. To be completely honest, I didn't have a great look. I was kind of looking at my screen. But it, from what I saw on my mini display, it did kind of seem like the defense did cause that contact, just stepped into position a little bit late. I'm assuming the referee's justification is there was a lot of contact um, caused by the glass and power and the way that she went in with her shoulder. But defensively, I don't think they had position, which still does go down as a defensive foul. So I'd have to have a look at it again. Coleman too strong. Glenn has scored for the Capitals on the possession before that, cutting their deficit to one. We've got about 30 seconds to go in this first half. Brisbane with an opportunity to take the lead. Marsh finds Grigg. Grigg swings it to Donders with five on the shot clock. Glenn's three is short off the front of the rim. Kelman Poto kicks ahead for gear. They can hold for the final shot of the half if they choose to do so. And it looks like they will. Kila Bethel has it. Comes off the beats and screen. Pull up jump shot short. Donders grabs the rebound. Two, one. Donders gets a shot off. It's up. No good. And that's the end of the first half. It's a one point game. Brisbane doing an excellent job in that second quarter, bringing themselves back into this matchup, Regan. Yeah, definitely so. Brisbane really came out firing from the get go in that second quarter and has done a great job. So. Um, look, not too bad at all from the Brisbane side. They've got themselves working pretty hard. So, look, really good job. Um, and it's going to be an interesting um, the second half as well. So it'll be interesting to see how it all pans out, to be honest. So uh, Gladstone, look, they're doing a lot of things really, really well so far in the game as well. And Coleman... Um, has been reduced in terms of her amount of scoring as well. So, you know, the big thing that we said leading into this quarter was that Coleman scored 12 points in the first quarter. They've come out in this second, and Brisbane's done a really good job of stopping her. She's only put an extra two points on the board. So, you know, what we discussed, Brisbane's actually executed, and that's what's got them back into this game. Because looking at the quarter time stats, Brisbane won that one 15 to 9 over Gladstone. So they really came out, they stopped Gladstone's scoring streak, and done a really good job themselves. Donders has really come out as well and got a Herself up to 10 points as well so great job on both ends of the floor for Brisbane and Gladstone just a little bit lacking in energy in some regards in that second yeah I thought Brisbane's bench did a really good job also giving them a, a lot of energy we mentioned Chris or Greg has had a pretty good game so far as has Emma Glenn uh, Isabel Parker had a few good moments as well in in that second quarter to get themselves within one 
Gladstone, the three-point shot kind of dried up there in that second mm -hmm. quarter as well. They were a little hotter from beyond the arc in, in that first quarter. We'll see what happens, though. It is halftime, so we'll take a break. We'll come back with some of the halftime statistics and the second half of action in your QBL Game of the Week featuring the Gladstone Port City Power, Breakers, and the Brisbane Capitals. We'll be back with you shortly. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to NAB Stadium in Hawk and Flower. Just about to get set for the tip of the second half. John Guarna here with Regan Baker. And, folks, we do want to remind you, please, if you can, visit the GoFundMe website. Search Get Norell Well and help Norell Kelly. She's in the fight of her life at the moment. She has been diagnosed with uh, breast cancer, and anything that you can contribute will make a huge help in Norell's fight to fight breast cancer. Again, visit the GoFundMe website, search up Get Norell Well and help us and the basketball community help Norell get well. Uh, getting back to the action, we'll go through some of the statistics for you at halftime. Uh, you've got the leading scorer in the game is Amara Coleman. She's got 14 points. Uh, next up is Frances Donders. She's hit the double digits as well. She's got 10 in a, after a really hot second uh, quarter of action. Dowdell, the second leading scorer for Brisbane with seven points. And then uh, Akilah Bethel has nine for Gladstone. You look at the rebounding numbers, Shenevia Dowdell, eight rebounds. Kelman Poto also has eight, Akilah Bethel with six. So she's pretty close to a double-double for Gladstone. It's a really, really tight game. It's only a one-point game at the break. Uh, what do you think is going to need to happen here for both teams in the second half, Regan, if they want to come away with the win? Yeah, look, I think the realistically it's going to come down to a defensive game, I think, more than anything. Both teams have been doing a relatively good job offensively. Um, like, just looking at the statistics, Brisbane shooting at 40.6% from the field. Uh, Gladstone, you know, a little bit less on 35. But... You know, tight game, it's going to come down to defense and whether they can stop, uh, you know, stop a couple of key players from racking up some points. And it's also going to come down to that right there, the turnovers. At the moment, Brisbane is well and truly losing that battle, unfortunately. They've turned the ball over 10 times now in the first uh, half and a little bit versus Gladstone's five. So, you know, it, all you need to do, protect the pill, run your offense as both teams have been throughout the game. But it's going to come down to that defensive end, to how well you can get your body on the line, get in front, play good D, and how well you can fight for those defensive and offensive boards. Bucket does not count. Foul happened before the play. That one goes against Matty Woodford. So Port City Power will maintain possession. It'll be sideline out of bounds just in front of their own bench. And if I'm Gladson as well, coming out of the halftime break, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make Coleman... Uh, a little bit more active. Uh, Brisbane did a really good job of shutting her down uh, in the in the second quarter, getting her only two points on the board. So if I'm Gladstone, I'm trying to get her open. I'm setting screens up high, getting Coleman open on the three-point line because she's had a really strong game from three. Uh, she's hit two, she's hit two out of four, so she's sitting on 50%. But she's been doing a great job in that first quarter and trying to get open in the second. But you know we need to try and make her happen if Gladstone's going to get themselves back in the game. Coleman was fouled off of her steal. I thought they called the foul. They just said it was out of bounds. Apologies for that one. Don't forget, guys, if you are tuning in, if you're on YouTube or on Facebook, let us know in the comments your name and where you're watching from. Make sure we get you a shout out. And we have a few family members and friends watching over in the States, so we appreciate you guys staying up a bit late to watch this one. Dowdell with the defensive rebound kicks ahead for Woodford. It's a good answer for Brayton Hasselhurst. What's up with morning games? That's exactly it. You know, our friends and family over in the States, it's a nice, easy game for them. Yeah, don't be so selfish, Brayden. <laughs> Other people like to watch too, you know. you got to help everybody. We're international. Donders drains a three. Donders gives Brisbane their first lead for a while. And Woodford tips one out of bounds. Francis Donders, the leading scorer in the game for Brisbane. She's now at 13 points, 8-10 to go in the third. Here's Coleman now, picking up her dribble. Goes to Kelman Poto. Goes to the left hand, bit of contact. She misses. Bethel offensive rebound. Putback is good. We're tied at 34. Yeah, and a great job from Bethel as well. Again, another player that had a really great first quarter of action, but was a little bit quiet in that second. And again, we've talked about it a couple of times, but Brisbane just did a really great job of shutting Glasson down. And they only managed, what, nine points on the board in that second quarter. So um, Bethel, it's good to see her coming out with a really great start to this third quarter because she's going to need to, you know, just take some more opportunities as well. There's a three from Bailey. Gladstone back up by three now. It's a good look there from Coleman as well. 
Turnover's starting to creep in a little bit here for the Capitals again, Regan. We've seen a few to start the third. Good action, and Howard finds Dowdell for the easy two. Coleman three-pointer off the side of the rim, tipped around. Parker comes down with it. Looks like they're going to get Bateson for the holding foul. Her second personal, the team's first of the third quarter. Parker kicks it out for Donders. Top of the key three is up. Thought it was going to roll in. Col Kelman Poto with the defensive rebound. Here comes Bethel kicking ahead for Coleman. That's a tough catch. There's a foul. Not sure who they're going to give it to. Looks like they're going to give it to... I don't know. It was an offensive foul. They're going to give that one against Amara Coleman pushing from behind. That's Regan? it. That's it. Come on, our resident referee. You've refereed in the QBL. You've refereed at the, the national level as well. That's a tough call there because it, yeah, there's definitely contact. You kind of almost have to blow your whistle. Well, and that's exactly it. Like in a situation like that, you have to call something. You know, there's a lot of contact. Both players go to the ground. The ball goes out of bounds. Coming out with a no call is probably not the right thing to do. So you have to have something. But in that particular situation, in my opinion, and I'm obviously a long way away, neither player was legal. No, there was obviously the jump from the offensive player going over the back, but at the same time, Matty Woodford wasn't exactly legal underneath. So I'm not disappointed with the call. I think it's probably the better call of the two. Uh, the contact, you know, she's jumped and landed on the back of Woodford. So, yeah, tough, right. tough decision. I was a long way away. <laughs> yeah, uh, you have to call something, like you said, so don't mind it. Donders, top of the key three, off the front of the rim. Some pretty good action uh, during that... Refereeing breakdown for us. Great no look pass there from Donders to Dowdell for an easy two. Then Bailey goes from one corner three to another. She went from the left side to the right side. Game's picking up a little bit of pace as Bethel shakes free along the baseline, misses the layup. She's frustrated. That was an easy two she dropped. Yeah, it's been a really good opening um, stretch to the third quarter, though. Both teams starting to put some um, nice, easy buckets on the board. You know, Brisbane's come out, scored seven already, and Gladstone on eight. So both teams come out. They've done a really good job offensively as we see the fast break opportunity now, and they're going to pick up the foul on that one for Donders. She doesn't look overly happy with it, but there was a little bit of hip contact that just knocked uh, Coleman off balance. They have definitely fouled with the body there. They, you know, that's the second time we've seen... Bethel throw that kind of lead pass for Coleman to run onto. Obviously, quite comfortable with her speed up and down the court. Two points, the lead here for the Port City Power. 5.13 to go in the first half. Kelman Poto swings it to Bethel. They've got plenty of time on the shot clock. Bethel steps around the defense, misses the floater. Kelman Poto finishes up the miss. Power breakers back up by four. Howard back out on the floor. Good to see she's back and, and okay after taking that knock to the face in the first half. Doesn't really seem to have any ill effects. Parker spins around the defense, flips it up and in, plus the foul. Really nice, strong take there from Parker, getting around the defense and finishing through the contact. Yeah, really good finish as well, and good to see Parker getting her body. And again, you know, I've said it a couple of times, she's done a really great job of getting herself into the keyway offensively and defensively. You know, she may only be young, but she's a tall player. So to get inside, you know, finish a good shot like that, get to the free throw line, it's great to see. Gladstone, I thought, was going to force the turnover, but it looks like... Foul went against, I thought they said it was eight. I'm, there's no eight on the floor for yeah, Gladstone. So maybe he meant nine. Chris, I, I don't know who meant that foul went against. There was a timeout taken on the floor. We'll take one as well. About four minutes and 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. It's a two-point game. Your QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Debt Media.
Back with you here at NAB Stadium in Auchenflower. Got to give a shout out to Gareth Monroe tuning in from Rockhampton today. Rocky had a couple of nice wins last night against the Sunshine Coast Phoenix. Both uh, men and women's team picking up the W last night. As uh, you know, we're nearly halfway, well, we are past the halfway mark of the season as Kelman Poto forces her way to the basket and is fouled. But really, you know, teams now, everyone's got their full teams. We've seen pretty much everybody so far throughout the season. Final spots are, are really up for grabs. Every game from here on out, uh, it, they all count because of the shortness of the season, but much more so as everyone's position on the ladder really starts to firm. Yeah, definitely so. And, you know, there's a couple of teams that really have grown in the last couple of weeks as well and, you know, really started to make an impact and, you know, prove that they are here to make that finals eight. And, you know, for me personally, last night was a perfect example of that with, you know, the Stream Team Australia doing the Ipswich Southwest game. Ipswich women really came out firing against Southwest after going down to them, uh, I think, three weeks earlier on. And they just came out absolutely firing. And I think it was a 100-72 to 72 win for the Ipswich uh, force over Southwest. And they're just really showing that they've, got such a dominating team and they're here to perform and just it was really great game to watch and they're going to fight their way into that eight yeah Ipswich was very impressive in that game last night I saw them a couple weekends ago when we covered their double header with Logan uh, you look at the women's competition and it's the Spartans and everyone else until someone can knock Spartans off uh, the pedestal where they're at they're looking for their third title in a row uh, they're sitting at un uh, in an undefeated mark heading into this round, uh, and until someone shows that they can beat the Spartans, it's the Spartans and everybody else. But I think the depth, particularly at the top of the women's competition in 2019, wouldn't be surprised uh, to see you know, a Rocky, a Mackay, Townsville. I think Logan is potentially up there as well. Mm. You know, I think there's a handful of teams that really could contend for a championship, and uh, it's been a really exciting competition to, to watch. I think the two teams we see in front of us here, Brisbane probably has dug themselves a little bit too deep of a hole to get themselves back into it. I think this game is uh, very important for Gladstone. If they do want to try and sneak into the eight, they cannot let this game slip, slip away from them. They're only up three with about three minutes, 40 seconds to go in the third. They're a little bit closer to the eight, but they still have a bit of work to do as well. Yeah, definitely so. And it, it is going to be an interesting second half of the season as well as we start to get to that time where uh, a lot of the college hopefuls or, you know, sorry, successful college applicants are all starting to leave as well. Um, we saw last night in the Southwest game, Shawnee Besto is heading over to the States now. Sid Wright's also headed over. So there's quite a few players that are going to be leaving their clubs in the next week or two to head over to the States to start preparing for their college careers. So, you know, it's, it's going to make a big impact on some teams and it's how well those, you know, six, seven, eight, you know, position players are going to be able to step into the team and have an impact as well. Good fake there by Woodford. She finishes through the contact. So she's got an opportunity to tie this game with the free throw coming up. That foul went against Ashley kelman Poto, her fourth personal. So she's going to have to take a breather. Gear checks back in for Gladstone. Woodford at the free throw line. Finishes, and we're tied at 43. Bethel on the baseline, looking inside. Swings it back around. Gladstone very perimeter-oriented so far. Donders comes up with the steal. They're going to call a jump ball. Donders putting their body on the line for that one. you got to love that if you're a Capitals fan. Yeah, definitely so. And there's been quite a fair bit of that in the game tonight as well with some of the players, uh, younger players as well, particularly getting their bodies on the line and getting into the action. So great to see Donders doing it as well, leading from the front. But there is a timeout on the floor now as well, Johnny. I think we'll take a quick break as well. But I'll be back with you shortly with more QBL action presented by Nothing But Net Media.
Back with you here at NAB Stadium in Auchenflower. We're tied at 43, under three minutes to go in the third quarter. Scores are 43 apiece. And a good time out there from Coach Cooper. Gladson getting a little bit sloppy with the ball and really struggling against the capital zone. Yeah, and they've started letting um, turnovers creep back into their game a little bit as well. They've added a couple in this third quarter, so you know, just need to do a little bit of a better job protecting the pill. And great defense there from Brisbane as well to really force that um, rush shot from Gladson right on the shot clock. So, look, I don't think it's necessarily that Gladson's been having a poor third quarter. I think that Brisbane's just come out and they've been doing a really great job defensively to make it hard for Gladstone to rack up the points. And that's what's got them back in this game. Yeah, Coach Cooper would not be happy calling a timeout and still getting the shot clock violation on that possession. Donders, good pass inside. Parker too strong on the layup attempt. Coleman comes up with it. Got a bit of a head of steam here. Picks up her dribble, finds a cutting beats, and it's tipped and recovered, though, by Coleman. Bailey kicks it out. Nearly stolen. Woodford knocks it out of bounds off the hands of gear, so it's going to be... Brisbane ball, really active hands defensively for the Capitals the last few possessions. Mm. Woodford has it on the wing, looking inside for Dowdell. Turnaround jump shot is good. Brisbane retakes the lead, they're up by two. Bailey's open for three off the side of the rim. Woodford defensive rebound. If I'm Brisbane now as well, I'm trying to get Dowdell firing as well. She's been a little bit quiet uh, since the first quarter of action. She came out, had a really great first quarter, racked up seven points early on, but hasn't, hasn't been too vocal in the second or the third so far. She only added on a couple of extra points to get herself to 11. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to get her a little bit more active, get her some more touches inside. She's got a relatively clear height and size advantage underneath. So if I'm Brisbane, I'm getting the ball into Dowdell and getting her working inside for some easy paint points. Nearly turned it over to Gladstone. The ball went out of bounds off of Brisbane. So, I'll maintain possession with 13 on the shot clock. Gear inbounds to a wide open Bailey. He'll fire the three. That's good from Bailey. Gladstone back in front by one now. And that's a good take from Bailey as well. She just had her feet ground. It was perfectly set. And just such a nice clean shot. That gets her into double digits now as well. So she's got 10. I'm going to call and looks like an offensive foul as Gear and Woodford battling it out inside. Oh, no. They pointed. <laughs> I think it went against Beetson. So it, it looked like it was. They signaled initially that it was against Brisbane, but it was against Amanda Beetson fighting for a position inside. It's the fifth team foul on Gladstone, so Maddie Woodford will go to the free throw line for a couple shots. Woodford ties it at 46 with the first. Second one is a swish. Brisbane back in the front by one. We've got under a minute to go in the third. Bailey from the corner, three, hits the back of the rim. It's tipped around. Donders recovers. There's a foul inside. That one's going to go against Emma Glenn. So it's going to be two shots for Amanda Beetson. Both teams in the penalty. Yeah, both teams just letting fouls creep into their games probably a little bit more than what both teams would be happy with as well. Um, that one there brings up Brisbane's 12th foul uh, and Gladstone's on 14. Sorry, so 13 fouls for Brisbane, 14 for Gladstone. So there's been a couple. We've had a couple of penalty shots. We've walked down the other end to take some free throws as well. Beats and hit them both. Back and forth the teams go. They keep continue to exchange one-point leads. Parker finds Donders wide open for three. Hits the back of the rim, tipped around. Bethel recovers for Gladstone. Bailey kicks ahead for Bethel. 
pass is tipped. Woodford comes up with the, the tip. Dowdell gets the steal. About three seconds difference between the game and shot clock. Woodford, skip pass for Donders. Touch pass to Parker is too strong. It's a turnover. The Gladstone has possession just under nine seconds to go, so they can hold for the final shot of the third. Yeah, it was a risky move there from Brisbane with the touch pass to try and get it into Parker. I mean, when you still had eight seconds left on the clock, it's probably better just to, you know, hold that one and not take that risk because you've gone from, well, potentially being down by a point to down by three, but great tip there last second by Don uh, Sorry, by Dowdell to get the block. But, you know, you don't want to risk it when you got eight seconds to go with that really quick touch pass that just went a little bit skew and didn't quite get to where it was going. So, a bit of a risky play by Brisbane, and thankfully they didn't get scored on down the other end. Yeah, it's a tight one, folks, so don't go anywhere. It's only a one-point game. Brisbane looking for their first win of the season. Gladstone looking to pick up their second win in two games down here in the southeast corner. We'll come back with some statistics in the final quarter of action of your QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media. Back with you here at NAB Stadium in Auchinflower. Ten minutes to go in this one, a one-point game. The Capitals looking for their first win of the season while Port City Power Breakers are looking to continue their winning ways after picking up a nice win the other night at the University of Sunshine Coast. Rip, don't go anywhere, folks. This game is coming right down to the end. Yeah, definitely so. And just getting some messages through on Facebook as well. And, you know, I can't agree more than with Coach Mugridge saying, you know, Dowdell's got to get the ball underneath. You know, she's been really, really quiet in the game so far. She's only got 13 points, um, which she's been averaging in the season over 20. So if you're Brisbane, you need to get the ball into Dowdell. Let her do some work in underneath because she's such a big presence in the keyway and she's done such a great job in the season so far. And there she goes, getting that nice offensive board and putting it back for the two. And down the other end of the floor, if I'm Gladstone, I'm trying to get Coleman hot again. She hasn't done a great deal um, since that first quarter. She's got herself only four points in the second and third quarter combined. So, you know, it's just a matter of trying to work those couple of key players and getting them good possessions where they're typically really good at scoring. Yeah, I think Gladstone's really made a focus of double teaming Dowdell, really cheating towards her as she hits the jump shot. So she's got the first four points of the quarter and Brisbane's up by three. So Coach Muggeridge might have had a direct line right to Coach Marshall in that quarter time break because we see early Brisbane going right to Dowdell Coaches with don't success. talk to each other through the, throughout the season, do they, Johnny? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> There's Coleman along the baseline, a lot of contact. She's fouled, and I like that really about Coleman's game. She really doesn't shy away from the contact. She knew where Dowdell was. She knew she was going to take a, a, a shot. She still went for it. Wasn't able to convert, but she'll go to the free throw line for a couple shots. Not having the success that we're used to seeing from the free throw line for Coleman. She's been to the free throw line eight times, only hit two of them so far this afternoon. Yeah, it's definitely not what we've come to expect. I mean, that's two from nine now from Coleman. She's had a much better free throw game uh, throughout the season than what is evident in the one here. So maybe they're just slightly tighter rings here at NAB Stadium, and she hasn't quite adjusted. Then an offensive foul called against Maddie Woodford. 
That's her third personal. It's the second team foul against Brisbane in the quarter. Bethel looks inside for Beetson. Layup is good. That's a nice catch and finish there from Beetson. Nice look, too, from Bethel. One point game, eight minutes to go. Donder skips it. Glenn's three is off the back of the rim. Long rebound chased down by Gear. That's going to slow things down a bit. Coleman, great pass inside for Bethel to finish. Bethel shakes free on the baseline. And a great find there from Coleman. Donder sees a path to the basket, dumps it off inside. Parker misses the layup, gets the miss, puts it back up and in. Donder's showing her unselfishness on that one. Bethel has it on the wing, guarded by Glenn. Now Bailey in the corner, three is up and down. Gladstone retakes the lead, they're up two. Yeah, it's just trading buckets at the moment. So again, defense is really going to come into this game because it's key for both teams to get the stops and then obviously get down the other end, convert, and just extend out a lead because at the moment, neither team can afford to just keep, keep trading buckets like what we're seeing. Foul called as Donders cut to the basket. Bailey gets called for the holding foul. That's Bailey's third personal, the first team foul. Dowdell and Glenn get a breather. Grigg. Back out on the court, as is Fagan for Brisbane. Exactly seven minutes on the clock. In a two-point game, great inbounds pass. Greg ties it up at 55. Yeah, just a little bit of a lapsing concentration there from the Gladson defense, just letting Greg walk her way through the center of the keyway for that one. Gladstone will inbound along the baseline. Underneath the Brisbane basket, Bailey's corner three is down again. Bailey bombing from deep. Yeah, and again, that was a perfect opportunity for Brisbane. They just got a nice, easy drive down the center of the keyway. That would have been an important moment to get a stop and start gaining some momentum, but they're just having a little bit of difficulty at the moment defensively to really get those key stops in you know, really crucial moments. Good foul there by Bethel. Fallon Grigg not giving her the easy basket. Donder's doing a great job getting her feet in the paint and creating opportunities for her teammates to kill Bethel's third personal foul. Grigg missed the first. Second one is good. Two point lead for Port City Power Breakers. So again, important now, Brisbane just really need to focus on their defense and make sure that this shot from Gladstone is a difficult one that's contested. Need to crash inside, get the boards as well if it's missed. Great job so far defensively. Bailey has to take a very deep three and it's an air ball. So that's really good, good for Brisbane. Yeah, there's very good swarming defense there for Brisbane. Collapsing on Bethel when she gets it in the paint, forcing her into a tough pass and forcing Bailey to take one a little bit out of her comfort zone. Yeah, so now's their opportunity. They got that great stop, which is exactly what they needed to do. But, you know, obviously it's important for them now to just move the ball around and look for those opening breaks in Gladstone's defense to try and get some points of their own to draw back this two-point lead. Parker swings it. Fagan baseline jump shot off the front of the rim, tipped around. Grigg recovers. But has it stolen by Bethel? Yeah, unfortunate miss there for Fagan. A really great shot opportunity and a good offensive play from Brisbane as well. Just unfortunately a bit too strong from Fagan, but good to see from Brisbane. Bethel's three is short. It's a good look. Both teams looking pretty exhausted with five and a half minutes to go in the game. Yeah, especially with Gladstone as well. You know, they've only come into the game uh, this morning or this afternoon now with, you know, a team of eight. So that really does work on, work on your legs on the road when you had a game late last night as well. Offensive foul called on Parker. 
As she left her feet, beats and saw it coming all the way and steps in to take the charge. Good idea by Parker. Dowdell checks back in for Parker with 5.20 to go. Gladstone's up two. Yeah, I've just sort of noticed as well, like realistically, Gladstone's playing with a team of six. So just looking at the players that have come on the court, um, Gear is the only one that's sort of come off the bench. So they're running through a team of six. I've got a feeling um, Guinea may, may have injured herself, Kia Guinea, in a game last night because she's the captain for this Gladstone side and hasn't come on the court yet. So there may be a bit of a, bit of a niggle or a lingering injury there. Good finish there from Kelman Poto. Coleman finds her wide open under the basket. Gladstone's up four. Pass inside, tough catch for Dowdell. She finishes strong. Good active hands there from Grigg, tipping it out of bounds. Going to stay with Gladstone with 16 on the shot clock. 4.40 to go in the game. Bethel has it on the wing. She reverses it to Coleman, coming off a of beats and screen. Looking for Bethel, it's not there. Coleman Poto now, four on the shot clock. Coleman has to fire a deep three off the front of the rim. Fagan chases it down. Brisbane's got numbers if they push. Inside for Dowdell, goes right through Bailey. That's a great charge taken there from Bailey as Dowdell used her elbow and body to clear the space. Yeah, really great recognition and positioning there from Bailey, just getting herself positioned perfectly behind Dowdell. Gave her the space that she needed in order for Dowdell to turn and cause that contact. So, you no, know, it's always tough playing defense from behind like that because realistically, if you're not giving the space or the notice of where you are, it's not going to be a charge call. So that's a really smart play from Bailey and especially at a crucial point as well. That's her four, that's Dowdell's fourth as well. So she's going to have to be careful. She's a key to this Brisbane team if they want to come back to pick up their first win of the season. They're down two with four to go. Bethel charges into the defense. If this goes against Dowdell, it could be her fifth and she could be done. It is against Dowdell. And that's going to be it for Shanavia Dowdell. She can't believe it, but that's her fifth. That's going to be her afternoon. She'll spend the rest of it on the bench for the Capitals. Yeah, a lot of con there was a lot of contact. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, it's just a tough and unfortunate play there for Dowdell on the fifth foul as well. It was just, you know, a lack of recognition from the Brisbane players about where the ball was going. And they did crash in a little bit too hard, cause that contact. So it is, it's tough for Brisbane. And look, you know, with Dowdell out now, it's definitely not game over for Brisbane. I mean, Dowdell has been relatively quiet in the game, you know, outside of the first quarter. So she had a really great start to this fourth. Hasn't done a lot since the first couple of minutes of the fourth quarter. So it's just a matter now of utilizing the players that you've got out on the floor. You know, Frances Donders has been having an amazing game, as has the likes of uh, Greg coming off the bench as well. She's had a really outstanding performance from there. So just utilizing the size and the strength that you've got. Get the ball in the hands of Donders or... Uh, even Emma Glenn's got a really great shot on her as well. Maddie Woodford hasn't fired too much for Brisbane, so there's still a wealth of talent out on the floor that they can utilize. Thunder's looking inside for Greg. Pass too low. It's a turnover. I think you hit the nail on the head, though. I think you need to see Donders really take over here for Brisbane and try to force the action for herself or her teammates. They need to get a couple buckets, 3.30 to go, and they're down four as Woodford goes to the rim to lay it up and in. That's too easy. No one stopped the ball for Gladstone. They are lead cut to two. Yeah, and that's exactly what you need out of Woodford as well. You know, taking charge as the captain out on the floor. And, you know, that's just a beautiful offense. She drove the floor. She recognized where the defense was, recognized that they weren't quite aware of you know, who was around and what they were doing. So really smart play from Woodford. And if she keeps doing that, then, you know, it's only a two-point gap. It's, it's easy to close, especially when you get a great stop like that. That was a good stop, as you said, for Brisbane. They have an opportunity to tie it with a two or take the lead with a three. Let's see what Brisbane has against this Gladstone zone. Glenn will fire a wing three off the front of the rim. Bethel comes up with the rebound. Gladstone's got a four on two. Bethel kicks ahead. Kelman Poto finishes strong. That's a great transition basket there for Gladstone. 
Coach Bronwyn Marshall forced to take a timeout with 2.42 on the clock. We'll take one as well. It's Gladstone's up by four, 64-60, in your QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media. Welcome back to NAB Stadium here in Auchinflower. A couple of Port City Power fans checking in with us on Facebook and on YouTube. Got to give a shout out to Power fans Gabby Orham and uh, Hannah your, Webb. Hannah Webb, yes. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Don't go anywhere. There's 2.42 to go. Port City Power clinging to a four-point lead. The Brisbane Capitals looking for their first win of the season. Let's see. If Gladstone has what it takes to hold on, or if the Capitals can get over the top here, if Gladstone, it was a good timeout, I thought, though, by Coach Marshall, letting her team settle things down and, and refocusing them for this final run. Yeah, definitely so. I think Brisbane definitely needed that uh, refocus. And they just, you know, just the confidence as well. And, you know, that message from, um, you know, their team, just like, look, we can still do this. We're only four points down. We've got two minutes 40 to go. We've got some great shooters out on the floor. Like, all we need to do is just set up our offense and take a good shot. Now, if I'm Brisbane, I'm probably not relying on the three-point shot. Like, you st at this point in time, four points down, two minutes 40 to go. Look, get the ball inside, you know, go to your strength. They're only shooting 16% from three-point land, but 45 from inside. So... You know, there's no need to rush or start panicking. Work to your strength. Get the ball inside. Work it around. You know, Griggs been doing some amazing things from inside, and as is Izzy Parker. So utilize your bigs or get Matty Woodford, you know, taking a nice little jump shot from the elbow. I think they just need to, you know, maintain composure, know that they've got it in them to win this one, and just look for the open and clean shots. Woodford turns it over. Bethel kicks it ahead for Coleman. She catches. Jump stop. Lamp is good. Zone defense, forcing the turnover for Gladstone. They're now up to six points, the lead. Need to see a little bit more movement from the Brisbane offense at the moment. They're really just setting their, planting their feet on the ground, and this zone defense from Gladstone is just, realistically, they don't have to move or really do too much. There wasn't enough momentum there from Brisbane or moving around to actually stretch out the zone to create the gaps to get inside. Yeah, zone for Gladstone, giving Brisbane some fits. Pass is too strong for Kelman Poto. Turnover there for Gladstone, the six-point lead. And it's moments like this that really make a team as well and show what they're sort of made of. Like a minute 40 to go, the Brisbane, well, both teams really, they're tired and you can evidently see that out on the floor. But it's these last couple of minutes where you really have to bust your legs and spread out the defense. Otherwise, you know, situations like that, you try and pass through traffic and end up turning it over. So, you know, tough, tough play from Brisbane. And look, Gladstone now with another opportunity to extend their lead. Brisbane turned it over as well, so a few turnovers starting to creep into the game. A minute 20 left in this one. Brisbane needs to make something happen. Nice pass from Bethel to Beetson, who's fouled. So she'll go to line for a couple shots, and I love that kind of high-low action. You see Bethel cut from the, the short corner to the free throw line as Beetson dives. That's just beautiful basketball there from Gladstone, and a really well-executed play. Eaton at the free throw line for a couple, hits the first. That's exactly what I was saying, Johnny, as well. Like, it comes down to these last couple of minutes. You know, now's not the time to be lazy on offense. And Gladson did exactly the opposite of that. You know, they still had that energy. They still moved the ball fast paced. There were still cutters coming through, and that's what opened that opportunity. Timeout on the floor. Let's keep it here with a minute 20 to go in this one. It is an eight point lead here for Gladstone Regan. Don't want to say it's too little, too late. Because it's not. The reality is is that you can come back 
from more than this with a minute 20 to go. Just wondering what you're thinking for Brisbane. Do they have it in them without the likes of Dowdell on the floor? And I think uh, Donders, again, we mm. mentioned it, and I probably sound like a broken horse here, or a broken record, I should say. Broken horse, I don't know where I got that from. <laughs> but they, they need Donders here. This is Donders' time. She needs to make something happen, whether it's for herself or for one of her teammates. Yeah, definitely so. And I think the first thing for me is it's a really unusual time to call a timeout. You're down by eight points with a minute 20 to go. For me, as a coach, this isn't a time to be calling the timeout to regain your troops. You need to save that timeout for the last couple of seconds when you're down by two or three to then get the ball advanced. Because right now is not when you need the ball to be advanced. You've got the time to get the ball up the floor and score. So it's an interesting coaching decision to have the timeout now. But if I am Brisbane, what I am discussing is everything that needs to happen in this last minute 20. And that is that Donders and Woodford need to make something happen. You know, with the likes of Dowdell out, they're not going to have that strength in underneath or that reliable strength underneath to get the points inside. But you need to get Francis Donders the ball to take an elbow jump shot or to penetrate through the keyway and get it open. Or the likes of Matty Woodford with a set jump shot. But the offense has to be moving and has to be fast-paced. They can't stand around and just expect the passes to happen. That's not going to do it for them. Well, let's see what Brisbane does out of the timeout. Good job here from Coach Cooper as well, changing it up from the zone to a man-to-man. -man. There's three on the shot clock. Woodford fires a long three. That's an air ball. And again, probably not what you want to see coming out of a timeout. A deep, deep three with the shot clock expiring. Yeah, and that's exactly it. You know, like I said, it was an interesting time for the timeout. And realistically, it ended up being a little bit of a waste. They had, you know, they had the 14 seconds to make something happen, and it didn't pay off for them. Kelman Poto hands off for Bethel. Bethel gets inside, flips up with the left hand, too strong. Tipped around, a lot of contact. Looks like they might call this one either against Woodford or Kelman Poto. It's going to go against Kelman Poto for the hold. And yeah, I think that's her fifth. So Ashley Kelman Poto is done for the afternoon. Coach Cooper can't believe it. The third team foul, but the fifth one on Kelman Poto. Yeah, look, and it was the right call as well, you know. Um, I think it was Maddie Woodford that was fighting against her as well. Woodford had the position in front to try and grab the ball, and Kelman Poto did just have that arm on her side, just holding her back a little bit. So it's the correct call. Um, and look, if I'm Gladstone, I'm not too concerned about that anyway. Like, Kelman Poto has been having a fantastic game, but we're eight points up, 45 seconds to go. If I'm Gladstone, I'm not concerned. Well, Brisbane needs to get a bucket in quick. Woodford has it. Working against Bailey, dribbles into a double team, flips one up off the front of the rim. Bethel, another defensive rebound. I think that miss seals the win here for Gladstone. It was a valiant effort from the Capitals. I think that Dowdell fouling out with a bit of time on the clock really hurt them. And they just didn't have the offensive chops to hang with Gladstone and sneak home with the win. Yeah, definitely so. And, you know, we've seen this a couple of times throughout the season and a couple of games that we've covered for Brisbane as well is in that fourth quarter, they really do just struggle to get points in key moments as well. They get into panic stations, they rush their offense or they don't move enough or get the ball to the open set shot. So, look, it's been a great performance from Gladstone as well. You know, with a team of only six players out on the floor, they've done a really great job of actually closing out this Brisbane team and just remaining composed. And even with tired legs and, you know, we sort of said before the game, they looked tired even before they came out on the floor but they've done a really great job to just continue that momentum and just trudge through this one to get themselves eight points up 17 to go you know they're going to come away with the victory and it's just been a really great game to watch as a whole yeah, it was, it's been an excellent performance from Gladstone as you mentioned they're they're playing with six players it's never an easy thing mm. to do they only traveled with eight so to con see the the amount of minutes that the team is putting in we saw big minutes from Bethel from Coleman from Beetson Bailey, everybody of the six really played tons of minutes. No one played less than 20 th so far this afternoon. That's a huge effort for a team, uh, and it's a great win. You know, you look at the records-wise, you think Gladstone should easily win this one. Brisbane was absolutely valiant throughout this game. They just didn't have enough to get over the hump at the end. And i got to give credit to this Gladstone team as well. Super versatile. They don't have tremendous size, but they all kind of do their job and do it well. So it was a really nice win for Gladstone, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely so. And, you know, I think that's exactly it. Like, Brisbane came out a little bit sluggish in the first quarter, had a really great, great second and third quarter to fight their way back into the game, but unfortunately just couldn't come out and complete the four quarters of basketball. They've gone down 13 to 22 so far in, um, in this fourth quarter. So... It's been a bit of a tough campaign for Brisbane um, here this morning, this afternoon.
Yeah, it was an excellent baseline out of bounds play drawn up there by Coach Cooper as well and executed to perfection by Gladstone. Bethel finished it through the contact, missed the three-point play opportunity, but really nice. And I like what Coach Cooper did there. He took the timeout, working on stuff. The, you're, you're always presented with opportunities to learn and improve, and I don't mind that timeout there from Coach Cooper. His team's up 10. They're going to come away with a really nice win and a very successful weekend for them, heading down to the southeast corner, picking up the win on Friday night against Rip, and then coming in here this afternoon and getting a nice win, as we see, and, you know, a, an intentional foul called on Donders. So going to send Bethel to the free throw line for a few shots, but the game is, is in, it's, it's over. Now we just need to know what the final score is. Yeah, definitely, and look, that's, that's just an unfortunate one there as well. And look, like you said, Gladstone just had a really, really successful weekend and they've just come down. They've been campaigning hard and, you know, coming out a little bit exhausted into the game here today. They've actually really shown what they're made of. And, you know, as you said, we're coming down to after, um, you know, we're into the second half of the season now where every sort of game counts to fight your way back into the top eight for the campaign. And look, with a really successful weekend, Gladstone's not out of the top eight and, They've come down with a very small team, but they've got a really good team in the same sense. So, you know, they're trying to work their way back into Bethel it as they beats just... It at the, beats the <laughs> buzzer with a deep three. Coming back to Brisbane and putting the icing on the cake for a 15-point win by Gladstone. I'd like you, Sorry to cut you off there, Regan. No. But uh, really good feeling there for Akilah Bethel to put the icing on the cake, like we said. It's a huge win for Gladstone. You look at the schedule for these teams next weekend. I'm just looking at round 10. And you have, where am I? Brisbane's going to visit Ipswich next Saturday for a huge game. Uh, Ipswich really rolling at the moment. That's going to be a tough one for uh, for Brisbane. And then Gladstone hosts North Gold Coast. North Gold Coast also fighting for one of those spots in the eight. So both of these teams with tough matchups next weekend. It was a really tough one this afternoon, mm. but a really, really nice win and a strong finish for Gladstone particularly. Yeah, definitely so. They just came out really successfully in that fourth quarter and you know they just campaigned the whole way through the game. They took it steady in the first and the second. They came back in the third. You know, really shows what they were made of, but it's that fourth quarter that really did it for Gladstone and they just came out absolutely firing and you know, you look at the stats out on the floor and they've just had, they've got such a deep team in their starting five. You've got, you know, uh, Bethel ending on 22 points, a whopping 13 rebounds and eight assists, uh, five steals as well, which is a great statistic to have up there. Uh, you got Coleman ending on 16, Bailey on 16 as well, pulling some decent numbers. Uh, and Amanda Beetson as well, pulling eight as well as Bailey 16. So they did a really good job of spreading those points around. And when one player wasn't scoring, someone else, you know, took to the mark and stepped up as well. Because Coleman had a relatively quiet second and third quarter. Um, but, you know, the other players stepped up and really shone in the game. Yeah, and for Brisbane, leading the way was Shanavia Dandel. She had 19 points, 14 rebounds, with four of them being offensive. Francis Donders had 13 points, five rebounds, four assists, also five turnovers. And outside of those two, those are the only two in double figures for Brisbane. Maddie Woodford, the next leading scorer with nine points, six rebounds, also with seven assists. So a nice overall effort for Maddie Woodford. Unfortunately for the Capitals, it wasn't enough as they go down by 15. 75-60. That's going to pretty much wrap things up for us, Regan. Got next week for us. Let's see who we got on the schedule. I think we're heading up to the University of Sunshine Coast next Saturday. We will see the Sunshine Coast Rip City host the Toowoomba Mountaineers in QBL action. And please don't forget, guys, if you can, head over to the GoFundMe website. Search up Get Narelle Well to help contribute to uh, the Narelle Kelly's fight against the breast cancer. But that's going to wrap things up for the women's game. Don't forget, we will have the men's game coming up for you shortly. I do have to thank Regan Baker on the commentary and production with me. i got to thank Chris Sieber on the camera work for me. And as always, I have to thank Australian Sports Network and James Bowman for all of their graphics and technical support. And i got to thank all of you for tuning in to another presentation of the QBL Game of the Week brought to you by Nothing But Net Media, Australian Sports Network, Stream Team Australia, and, of course, Basketball Queensland. <laughs>